Glory to God. As you're joining on, share this broadcast. Get the gospel out. Share this broadcast. Get the gospel out and say, Father, I received the prophet's reward. I need over 100 people that believe in Jesus to share, share, share right now. Every person, as you're joining on, share this broadcast. Everyone, blessings to you. Blessings to every single person. As you're joining on, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Invite your followers. <laughs> Everyone, blessings to you. Share this broadcast. Everyone, we give the Lord glory today. I'm sharing some powerful things on here. Blessings to you, every single person. Nice to see you. Share this broadcast. Stay focused. Stay focused. I need everyone, as you're joining on, share this broadcast. I need over 100 people sharing this broadcast right now you're joining on share get the gospel out give the lord all the glory today we give the lord all the glory today We give the Lord all the glory today. You're joining on. I need everyone share. I need over 100 people share this broadcast. Share it to your page. Get the gospel out. Glory to God. Everyone, I, I'm I'm currently excited. I'm I'm excited, uh, of course, to welcome Holy Spirit Fire Conference, two thousand nineteen. Power of God and the glory of God will be amazing. And I'm excited about the Lord touching the people of God with his strength, his glory, his fire. It's going to be amazing. Saints, one thing that you have to uh, catch is that when the Lord calls you and he anoints you as a prophet, uh, there are going to be people that don't understand what a prophet is. A prophet belongs to the Lord. A prophet is responsible to the Lord. His ability to respond is to the Lord, to surrender, to submit, 
to listen, to obey. A lot of times there will be people that's not even prophetic. There are people that's not even prophetic that's going to fight the prophet. That ain't going to like the prophet. Because the prophet really comes carrying a heavy presence of Jesus, a very strong presence of Jesus. The prophet comes carrying a very heavy uh, ministry. And most times when the prophet comes on the scene, the prophet comes to test the hearts of men. That's what even the prophetic does. It reveals the secrets of the hearts of men. When a prophet comes, there will be people that's not even prophetic that would try to stop the voice of the prophet. We often forget in biblical terms what a prophet was. A prophet was rejected by society. We see Elijah was considered what we would think is a strange man, a hairy man. So was John the Baptist, considered a strange, unusual man. And they were not, uh, they were not fitting in with society. Religious people hated them. Traditional people fought them. Look at the life of John the Baptist, how Herod didn't like what he prophesied and wanted him to be criminalized for what he said. We see that with Prophet Micaiah. I said that in my former video about Prophet Micaiah and how Prophet Micaiah, when he spoke, the king of Israel, which was Ahab, wanted him locked up in jail. We see that a prophet uh, is often considered a troublemaker by natural people, by people that function in the natural, by people that are not surrendered to the Lord. Oftentimes, a prophet is... Hated by people that are not in submission to the Lord's will. If you are a prophet, you must know that carnal people will hate you very strongly. Saints, when you're a prophet, people will hate how you dress. If you got good looks, they'll hate how you look. If you smell good, they'll hate how you smell. They'll despise things about you that are even innocent. Every prophet must have a backbone. You must know that you're not sent to the earth to win man's applause. You're not sent to the earth to win friends. You're not sent to the earth for everybody to give a good report about you. At the end of your life, you want to hear Jesus say, well done. You may not hear it from people in this life. The people in this life are very trifling. They're very double-minded. A prophet can minister hours and a person can feel the anointing from the prophet. And then they can still say that the prophet is false. A person can be delivered from wrong thoughts, wrong ways from a prophet. And they can still say that that prophet is wicked. You have to be ready for this if you are a prophet. You have to be ready for betrayal because betrayal will happen. You will see and hear People say things about you that are not true. You have to be ready for that. You cannot be someone that's easily damaged by lies because it's going to happen to you. And, and let me say this. Some of you all have prophetic potential, but you're very childish 
You're very carnal and foolish because what you sow today, you're going to reap tomorrow. If you pitch your mouth on other ministers, there's going to come a day where people are going to pit their mouth on you. You will reap what you sow. You have to be careful how you treat people because it's going to come back to you. You may not feel it right now, but it's going, God is going to make sure what you do to people, it will be done back to you. I often see so many people, they have the world's applause. How could you have the world's applause if you are anointed by God and the world hates God? The world hates Jesus. Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. Jesus said, the, the student is not greater than the teacher. If they hated the teacher, they're going to hate you. When you are carrying Jesus, you will be hated. You'll be hated by strangers. You'll be hated by people that never met you. You'll be hated by people that are jealous of you. You'll be hated by people that can't prophesy like you. They can't demonstrate the spirit of God like you. There are so many ministers in the earth right now that Jesus would like to use them, but he cannot use them because they have so much hatred in their heart. You can't even get along with your brother. How could God use you with a healing anointing? Healing anointing comes out of love and compassion. How could God use you in prophecy in your heart? It can't even dwell at peace with your brethren. There are characteristics that the Lord looks for when he's about to exalt a man in a nation when he's about to exalt a woman in a city. There are characteristics that the Lord looks for. There are things that he needs to see that please him. Things that are of faith, because it says that whatever is not of faith is sin. That's what the word of God says. So he needs to see things that are of faith and love is of faith. That's why Galatians 5, 6 says, that faith worketh by love. So it's impossible for you to say that you are in faith if you don't know how to love people. One thing that we must remember, and I'm going to say this again, is that you will reap what you sow. If you sow mistreatment to others, you're going to reap mistreatment from others. Oftentimes the devil does not let you see it. He does not uh, let you ponder upon it. It's embarrassing if you call yourself a prophet and all you do is talk about other prophets. It's embarrassing if you say that God called you to ministry, but you don't even have a word, all you can do is slander other ministers. It's embarrassing. What is the word of the Lord for my life? I don't need to hear about bootleg Jordans. I don't need to hear about bootleg Nikes. If I came to buy some Nikes, I don't need to hear a whole discussion about bootleg Nikes and bootleg Jordans. I came to buy some Jordans. Let me buy the Jordans. There are people that are coming to hear the gospel. And we have a whole generation of ministers that don't have no healing in ministry. They don't have no signs and wonders in their ministry. They're not doing the work of the gospel. They're slandering other ministers. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Jesus called us to preach the good news to people so that they can come out of debt, so that they can come out of death, so that they can come out of fear and worry, so that they can come out of sin. So that they can come out of disobedience. 
so that their name can be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We need people that truly love Jesus preaching the gospel. We rarely see it. Everybody is trying to become famous by talking about somebody that's famous. If somebody see God using a man, if they see God using a woman, they talk about the man or the woman so people can look at them. What is your motive for preaching? What is your motive for uttering the word of God? What's your motive? You've been called to bring reconciliation to people back to God. What's your motive? You know, my heart grieves only at the fact that there are so many people that say that they love Jesus. They don't even know how to treat people that they see every day. How could you say you love a God that you have not seen? And you can't even treat a person that you see correctly. What is your motive for what you are doing? Many people, they claim to be prophetic. Discernment is not the revelation of the prophetic. Love is the revelation of prophetic. As a matter of fact, Jesus discerned and he knew that Judas was the devil, but he still loved Judas. Samuel discerned and knew that Saul was operating in witchcraft, but he still loved Saul. God knew and he discerned and knew that Adam had ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he didn't utterly destroy Adam. He gave him consequences. He told him, cursed is the ground for your sake. He didn't utterly destroy the woman. He gave her consequences. He said, now you shall have pain during childbirth. He didn't even utterly cut off the serpent. He told the serpent that he's going to eat the dust of the ground. What is your motive? If you don't have it in your ability to love somebody, leave them alone. Leave them alone. We have a whole generation full of bullies. If you don't adapt to somebody, they try to fight you. I've had many people reach out to me because I don't have the permission from God to connect with them. They try to bully you. They try to slander you. You must understand that a prophet is not his own. He belongs to Jesus. He has to obey Jesus. His master is Jesus. His commitment is to Jesus. His passion is Jesus. His focus is Jesus. His whole zeal is Jesus. The powerful thing about a prophet is that the Lord gives the prophet the ability to stay focused on him. Gives the prophet the ability. Some of you all will catch that. You'll go through seasons where... Uh, Satan will fight you. Uh, but you have a supernatural ability to stay focused. It doesn't affect your focus. A prophet is a friend of Jesus. But they're an enemy to the world. If you are not full of the Holy Ghost, you'll never understand a prophet. If you are not someone that has yielded your life to following Jesus, you're picking up your cross daily, you'll never live at peace with the prophet of God. You'll just be like the world. You'll slander the prophet. You'll hate the prophet. You'll fight the prophet. 
Every prophet must know this, that no man can take away your position from you. No man can take away your anointing from you. I myself have had many years where I've had people, so to speak, pick curses. They prophesied stuff. They said, oh, the Lord told me that prophet Joshua Holmes is going to die by this time. Prophet Joshua Holmes, his ministry is no longer going to exist by this time. <laughs> I've had many people prophesy things over the years, 2016, 2017, or in 2018. The words never came to pass, never will come to pass. The reason why, because if God builds something, it cannot be destroyed. If God creates something, it cannot be abolished. Remember the Bible even said in 1 John that the earth and the heaven shall pass away, but those that do the will of the God, will of God, shall abide forever. You notice that, right? It said those that do the will of God shall abide forever. It lets you know that people that are doing the will of God, they shall abide forever. They'll never die. They'll never perish. You have to be someone that avoids the temptation to crucify Jesus afresh. Hebrews says that it's very possible it's very possible that you can crucify the Son of God afresh to an open shame. How do you do this? You do this when you fight a man of God. You crucify Jesus afresh. When you talk about people that God has not given you the authorization to talk about. You crucify Jesus again to an open shame. When you are a gossiper, a slanderer, you mistreat people, you judge people. Bible say, judge not lest you will be judged. At the same measure you judge, it will be measured back unto you. So that means that if you are somebody that places judgment on a man or a woman, be ready for Jesus to place judgment on you. Will you be able to stand? When he judges your life, are you doing everything right? Are you... Are you perfect? If you are, then keep on judging. But if you got stuff in your life that you have not surrendered to God, if you have stuff, it's very foolish for you to pit judgments on people. Here's, here's what I want to talk about as well. And this is so powerful. It was just on my heart. Mercy is such a powerful gift that you give to people. I give mercy all the time. Mercy is a gift. This is the law of my life. It's the law of the wise. It's the law of kingship. True kings master mercy. It's the law of the wise. Uh, the Bible says the merciful man doeth good. Uh, he doeth good to his own flesh. The merciful man doeth good to his own flesh. Uh, Jesus has been talking to me this day about mercy. I had a conversation with Jesus and he was speaking to me and told me, he said, son, the wisest person is the most merciful person. And I want some of you all to write that down. 
the wisest person is the most merciful person. Mercy is where you give people an opportunity to experience God through you. Wow. You may say somebody is not of God. Okay. If they're not of God, then that means that they need a God experience. Here's the powerful thing about this. Jesus told me today, he says, son, I even preached. And a lot of people miss what I said. I said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. He says, son, people don't know that mercy is conditional on my end. Because I told you, if you don't give mercy, you're not going to obtain it. He says, son, there's a whole generation of people on the day of judgment. They will not receive mercy because they never gave it. You may have been right in preaching the, the word of God with standards, but was your attitude merciful? See, saints, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this because oftentimes people love the side of truth because they want to be hard on people. Remember the woman that was caught in the act of adultery? Yes, she was caught. Yes, she was caught. But look at their attitudes. Let's kill her. Let's kill her. Look at their attitude. Let's kill her. Yes, there was truth, but there was no mercy. There was no grace. Why you want to kill the woman so bad? Do you want somebody to kill you? How would you like to be stoned? Watch what Jesus responds to them. And this is how Jesus operates. Look how he responds to them. Instead of Jesus saying, yes, the law said to kill him. And they even used the law of Moses. They said the law of Moses because they know that Jesus loves Moses. The Bible said that Moses appeared to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Even Moses prophesied about Jesus is coming, said that there was going to be a greater prophet that comes. That if we don't heed his words, we'll be destroyed. Wow. 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 This is so powerful. This is so powerful. Instead of Jesus stoning the woman, he said, he that has no sin, you cast the first stone. Why didn't they stone the woman? Why didn't they stone this woman? Jesus just gave them permission to do it. He said, if you have no sin, you cast the first stone. Jesus didn't tell them that they can't cast a stone. Jesus said, y'all can stone her. You can fulfill your desire on her. But if you don't have no sin, you do it. Why did they run away from Jesus? Imagine this. They were so hard on the woman about truth and they themselves didn't even have the authority to stone her. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about that? They didn't have the authority to be talking about this woman. They didn't have the authority to be judging this woman. Wow, wow, wow. They didn't have the authority to even put their mouth on this woman. And Jesus was the only one that could reveal it to them. You wrong. You are wrong. You feel that you're right because you want to crucify this woman. That's your desire. But what do I want? What if ministers will find out what Jesus wants? I was talking to someone that I knew. I told them, how come pastors don't ask Jesus what he has to say about people? Why does a pastor have to know your reference? Who you know, where you have been, all these different stuff. I don't need to know all that. 
I just need to know what the Lord is telling me about you today. I don't need to know if you got five baby daddies. I don't need to know if when you were 16 years old, you overdosed on pills. I don't need to know that. I don't need to know about your history. I just need to know about your intimacy. Have you become one with Jesus today? Have you become one with the Lord today? Where do you stand with the Holy Spirit today? It's so sad that the Bible teaches us how to live at peace with our brethren. The Bible says that a proud heart stirreth up strife. We see so many people stirring up strife and they're saying that God is having them do it. No, no, God called you to preach the gospel, the good news. He said, go and make disciples of men. He didn't call us to do slander, seeds of discord. He didn't call no one to do that. That's witchcraft at its finest. That's the ministry of a witch. That's the ministry of a sorcerer. That's the ministry of a demon, a fallen angel. Because that's what Lucifer did in the beginning. He was responsible for sowing seeds of discord into one third of the angels. It's not of God. There's no anointing in that. There's no reward from God. There's no blessing in that. We see the ministry of Jesus. We never see Jesus harming anyone because love does no harm. If you don't agree with a man or a woman, leave them alone. Stop trying to bully people into what you think is right. That's what Pharisees do. When they feel that they have a law that is correct, they want to stone you to fulfill their law. A prophet is a messenger of Jesus. They are responsible to carry the word of the Lord. They are responsible to fulfill an assignment. There are some of you all on this line that are prophets. You have to be ready for this wicked world. You can't be unprepared. You have to know that there are going to be people in this earth realm that are going to hate you without cause. There are children of Satan on this earth. You have to be aware of that, that not everybody is a child of God, not because they talk about God. What are their fruits? Do they manifest love, joy, peace? Because these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, not you saying that you saved, but the fruits, where are your fruits? What are your fruits? Discernment requires love. Because even if God lets you discern things about people, he never called you to try to destroy them. He never called you to do that. And saints, I'm telling you right now that there's a purity being restored God is raising up his prophets, his true prophets that will walk in love and mercy and the fruit of the spirit. Uh, they'll be loving. They'll be patient. And they will treat the children of God the way that they're supposed to be treated. As a leader, the body of Christ don't need 
foolishness dis dispersed in them. A minister is supposed to speak a word that will edify people, build them up, take them into a realm with Jesus that they always wanted to be. Enough with the foolishness. I realize that people are not really hearing from God, so they're left to slander each other. It's so sad. I'm a, I'm a prophet that preaches and teaches on the deep things of God. I get revelation from the Lord all the time. If you ever watch my video, see some of you all, you watch my video because you, you hate him. If you would pray in the Holy Ghost and watch me, you would hear Jesus speaking to you. But you can't because you already have an agenda. And the demonic don't want you to walk in love. They, the, the demonic don't want you to walk in the spirit. If you would listen, Jesus said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. You would encounter the wisdom of God. I teach all the time. I'll be teaching later on on Periscope, preaching on deep things, on Periscope. I do it daily. I've been doing this for years daily. You know, oftentimes we talk about prophets, they just got a gift. Well, I teach more than I prophesy. I demonstrate the power of God in my meetings. I demonstrate, do healing, all those different type of Jesus ministerial activities. I do it all the time, but I teach more. And this is the revelation that the presence of God is inside of a person. Not because they demonstrate, but because their heart is carrying the wisdom and knowledge of God. Huh? Do you understand this? So if you want to know where a man or woman stands, listen to their teachings. Listen. The Bible said if you answer a matter before you hear it, you're a fool. That's what the word of God teaches. In Proverbs, it said if you answer a matter before you hear it, you are a fool. And there are so many fools. How could you talk about something that you don't know? How could you talk about somebody that you never met? It shows how foolish. The Bible says, forsake foolishness and live. I think that's Proverbs chapter 9, verse 6. The ministry of a prophet is to reveal the love of Jesus. To reveal Jesus to people that are hungry and thirsty, that are lost. That's the ministry. The ministry of a prophet is not to create hatred and division between the body of Christ, between people. And, and let me just say this. There are some people, you don't know how to exit someone's life. I'm not the type that when somebody, uh, God disconnects me from somebody, I got to slander them. But some of you are, you're so childish. Just because God disconnected you from somebody, you don't have to try to destroy their reputation. People do that all the time. Just because somebody don't want to be bothered with you, you ain't got to try to tear them down. That's not of God. Leave them alone. If they don't want to be bothered with you, you can't get mad and out of your anger, you try to turn everybody against them because they don't want to deal with you. Because they don't want to have a friendship with you. They don't want to be uh, in connection with you. You start trying to slander them. And like I said, I've had ministers do that with me. They, they want to, they, they say, oh, they want to talk with me. I don't want to talk to you because your heart not right. Jesus told me not to talk to you. Some people say, oh, well, the Bible said, the Lord said, go to your brother. And if, no, no, most people have already spoken about you. And then they come to you afterwards. They're already in witchcraft to the scripture. 
There are many people, they talk about you, then they come to you in secret when God is tormenting them. Because the same spirit that God sent on Saul when he was fighting David is the same spirit God sends upon people when they fight prophets. When they fight his prophets, God will place an evil spirit on you just like he did with Saul. He the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's so many people that pit their mouth on you and then they come to you in secret after they done talked about you. No, you are already in violation to scripture. So I have a right whether or not I want to talk to you. Then people use the scripture and say, oh, what well, the Bible said, go to your brother. No, no, it said that before you went and went, go speak to everybody about your br brother. So you already violated the scripture. So therefore the scripture is no longer in effect concerning this matter. See, this is the wisdom that Jesus speak to me about. Jesus talked to me about this. There's some of you all, you want to come and, and act like you reconciling with people, but you done, you done try to damage them. And when you realize you can't damage them, then you try to come and talk with them. No, no, no. You are already in violation. You need to repent. That's what you need to do. You don't even need to talk to them. You need to repent and you need to go on the same platform where you slandered them and you need to clarify that you was wrong. That's the true fulfillment of scripture. Go on the slain, go, go on the same platform that you slandered them. And you talk about where you went wrong. I've had interviews that I refuse to air because it involved the slandering of another person. I refuse to do that. I refuse to do it. I refuse to do it. I'd rather look like the worst person in this world to ever try to slander somebody after I have forgiven them. I don't care what people got to say about Prophet Joshua Holmes. It don't matter to me. I'd rather that than to ever try to destroy somebody that I've forgiven. I won't do it. I won't sell out. No, nah, no, nah, I won't do it. There are genuine people in this earth. Blessed are you if you ever find it. I refuse. I don't care about fame and all that stuff. I won't sell out my loyalty to the Holy Spirit for nobody. 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 Let me tell you something. I'd rather have no money and being right standing with Jesus. I'd rather have no fame and being right standing with Jesus than to have the world's applause, to have money and everything that the world can bring and have Jesus in disagreement with my life. Oftentimes, some of you all, you will do anything to get a platform. You'll talk about people. You'll try to act like you got some type of superior discernment. What if people go inside of your closet and find out stuff that you do that you don't want nobody to know? And while you throwing the stone at somebody else, what if Jesus asks you, he that hath no sin, you throw the first stone. What if he asks you that? Can you stand? Can you stand? Jesus ministered to me today and he told me about mercy. Why? Because I do it all the time. He said, son, tell my people that if they are unmerciful, they are going to receive the harvest of people being unmerciful to them. He said, tell my people to be very careful because I preached I preached and I said, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. If some of you all don't got no mercy, 
you better be very careful how you pitch your mouth on people because you will need mercy in this life. I don't care who you are. You will need mercy in this life. And saints, do you know Jesus said something profound to me? He said, son, even I needed mercy. I said, Lord, how did you need mercy? He said, son, remember David prophesied because he was seeing in the spirit. He said that you will not leave my soul in Sheol. He said, son, I had to hope in the mercy of the father that I was going to come out of Sheol. I had to believe the prophecy. It's powerful. Jesus told me this. Some of you all, you got so much truth to you, but you don't want to be merciful to nobody. That's evil. It's evil. Watch this. If you kill them, okay, fine. But what did it profit that you killed somebody? What did it profit you that you destroyed somebody's life? What did it profit you? And if you can rejoice over killing somebody, over destroying their reputation, destroying their life, if that's what you love doing, it just proves your heart. It just proves that you don't really have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. What does it profit you? The Bible said Jesus told us that the greatest commandment is to love. And then it says, after he told us to love the Lord God, to love our neighbor as ourself. That's what the word of God told us. The word of God, Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love. Love Jesus and then love your neighbor as yourself. Don't let it be seen amongst you that you call on the name of Jesus and don't know how to love people. The Bible said love covers a multitude of sin. It's so sad that we go to the Lord for mercy and then we love to see other people crucified. We love to see other people have bad news. You know, there's a scripture in Proverbs that was very shocking. It said, don't rejoice when your enemy falls unless the Lord turns and sees you doing it and get you. That scripture was so profound to me. It said, don't rejoice when you see your enemy fall. Because the Lord may turn and see it and get you. It's in Proverbs. Oftentimes people do that. It's very, because God is dealing with the heart. He's dealing with the heart. Sometimes you can be cold hearted and not even know it. You can be so cold blooded and not even know it. Be careful how you treat people. Stop doing people wrong in the name of God. Stop talking about people evil in the name of God. Stop talking about uh, men of God and then stamping as if God is giving you some superior discernment. Be careful how you treat people. Don't be found doing people evil and stamping the name of Jesus on it. That's not Jesus, that's witchcraft. And then for the other people that try to force you to respond to them, stop trying to manipulate people. Stop trying to control how other people rule their ministries. You didn't give them their ministry. You didn't give them their assignment. Leave them alone. The Bible talked about that some people eat vegetables. Some people can eat the whole buffet of the word of God. Some are weak in faith. Some are strong in faith. But it says, don't let the person that can eat all things 
fight the person that doesn't eat all, all things. And don't let the person that doesn't eat the whole word fight the person that can eat the whole word. Leave people alone. Stop trying to tell people how to run their ministry. You didn't call them. You'll never see Prophet Joshua going to a man and telling him, oh, run your ministry like this. If Jesus called them, Jesus decides how he wants them to run their ministry. And Jesus don't really care what you think. Jesus really ain't got an answer to you. You on the earth, you need Jesus. You need his mercy. Stop manipulating people. That's the spirit of witchcraft that goes on, that you try to control people's lives. You want to control how a minister operates. That's not your authority. Stay in your lane, get your assignment done, and stop being nosy. Stop being a busybody. Get your assignment done. Get your assignment done. Get your assignment done. Mind your business. Mind your business. Some of you are, are on social media all day. You don't even got a prayer life. You don't even praise God. You don't even read the word. You don't meditate the word. Your social media filled up. You're, you're filled with social media. You're not filled with the spirit. And that's why deception can overtake you. Be careful. The word of the Lord, walk in mercy. Walk in love. Mercy is the wisdom of God. You're going to need it. You may not need it today, but you're going to need it tomorrow. Let me tell you something. You don't know what's going to happen to you. Well, you're going to need God to be gentle and merciful to you. The Bible said, even if you see your brother in sin, restore such a one with the spirit of gentleness. That's what Galatians taught us. It didn't say restore them with slander, restore them with evil. It didn't say that. It said restore them with gentleness. Be careful how you treat people because it's going to happen back to you. If you do people wrong, you're going to receive wrong as well. Be very careful. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If you're not merciful, you're not going to have mercy when you need it. Always remember that. Today, everything may be okay. You may not got no complications in your finances, your body, nothing. But what if something happens? You need Jesus to be merciful to you. Stop being hard on people. I'm going to tell you that right now. We love to, we love, how many of you all got children? Sometimes your child may do stuff. And you know that your child may be wrong. But God will tell you, don't hit them. You still beat the brakes off of them. Because you hard. But then when, when God dealing with you, you want God not to chasten you as hard. But you want God to be merciful to you. Stop being so hard on people. Sow the word into them and give them a chance to do it. If they don't do it, don't harm them. If you feel the urge to harm them, get away from them. But you're going to need mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. To be continued. Follow me on Periscope at Prophet Joshua Holmes. Follow me on Periscope at Joshua Holmes 777. Keep up with the wisdom of God. I'll be teaching. Follow the ministry because I'm always active. I'm always giving you a fresh word. And those of you are that love Jesus and love the wisdom of God, love the anointing of God, love the power of God. I am going to continue releasing the power of Jesus to you. Freely I've received, freely I give. Make sure you follow me on Periscope and bless you in the name of Jesus. Love you all.